In verse 3 it says, As he sat down on the Mount of Olives, opposite the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will the sign what will be the sign when all these things are about to be accomplished? So he would have left the temple. In fact, leaving the temple for the last time. He never comes back to the temple. And would have gone to the Mount of Olives. And this is kind of a, a famous picture. Or these, these types of pictures, if you do Google image search and look for pictures of Jerusalem, <coughs> lots of them look like this. And they're taken from the Mount of Olives. So the temple would have been around here back in the day. And so they would have walked down the valley, up the Mount of Olives, sat down. So it's quite a walk. And the disciples were perhaps thinking about this for the entirety of the walk. And then Jesus then sits down and then just looking at where the temple is, at the, at the town. But here he sits there overlooking the temple. And then the disciples, a group of four of them, finally ask him, so what do you mean by this? It's interesting because Jesus had predicted his death and crucifixion and resurrection three times already. And not once did the disciples say, what do you mean by this? Or when is that going to happen? Or explain the timeline of that. So they, they only asked about this mention of the destruction of the tabernacle, the, sorry, the temple. They had a seemingly misplaced priority. So they, they asked him about when the temple is going to be destroyed. And they also seemed to ask, when will all these things be accomplished? Their, their question, it has to do a lot... They ask about when the temple is going to be destroyed, but they're really getting at where, when are all these things going to come to an end. In, in the Jewish mind, the temple is not going to be destroyed unless the whole world ends. They, just, they see them all connected together. So they ask this, this question about the temple that links into everything else. And Jesus' answer, well, has to do that. And what we have here is the longest speech of Jesus in all, the whole Gospel of Mark. And we're going to see that he answers them here. And then in Mark, sorry, Matthew chapter 24 and Luke 21, he also answers them. And he gives the same answer, but they're, they're a bit expanded in those other ones. There's certainly not time to get into it, but if you just want to jot down Luke 21, Matthew 24, for a more um, fully orbed look at what happened there on the Mount of Olives. But he begins to answer. They say, what are the signs of the destruction of the temple, what are the signs that this whole thing, all these things, are wrapping up, are finishing? And then Jesus answers. He answers from verse 5 down to verse 8. And he gives a couple, what I call, non-signs. They say, what are the signs? And he says, well, here's some things that aren't signs of the end of all things. Jesus began to say to them, See that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and they will lead many astray. And when you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. But these are the beginning of the birth pains. <coughs> What are the signs that are going to come before all these things happen, Jesus? And then he gives these things and says, these are going to be characteristic of the time before this happens. But these are not going to be the signs that lead up to it. It's funny, I've been carefully reading this. We, oftentimes we hear these, these things quoted as, these are going to be the things that show that the end is really soon. But Jesus says, this is how things are going to be. From now on, he talks about how there's going to be wars, rumors of wars, and earthquakes in various places, along with, uh, with famines. I don't believe that wars and earthquakes are signs of the end of the world looming. I believe that they're signs that all is not right in the world. Wars would be a sign, a evidence of the sinfulness of humanity, I believe it's possible for one side to justly go to war against another side, but that's pretty much hypothetical. 
because rarely will you find um, perfect motives and perfect practices on any sides of the battleground. But this is an evidence that at least one, probably both sides, are, are <coughs> sinfully motivated or sinfully acting. And earthquakes, as have been all over the news, um, are a sign that that this world is is broken. And Romans chapter eight is a is a wonderful. Um, chapter that talks about the, the life that Christians have in the spirit, but also just the, the fallen part of, of the world. And it says that creation groans in eager longing, waiting for the unveiling of the sons of God, saying that, that creation has been subjected to futility, not willingly and not, not permanently, but, but the time comes when, when this world will be made right. But Romans 8 says that's not yet. And so we see the earth groaning. Jesus says that the time between my first coming and my second coming is going to be marked by these things. The world is, is broken. People are sinful. Wicked things, awful things will happen. But these, he says, are not the signs of the end. These, he says, these are the beginnings of the birth pains. Um, some translations say beginning of sorrows. Um, I, I really prefer, I want to emphasize uh, how most Bibles will translate this as, as the birth pains. I'm not speaking as an expert. Mom, so get mad at me for, for presuming to know what it's like. But, but, but they, they come and there is a, a frequency. And even more and more as the, the goal is, is reached, the frequency does increase, and the intensity increases of, of birth pains, of these labor pains. He, he talks about how wars, he talks about how earthquakes, how these famines, they aren't the sign, but, but it is a sign that things are wrapping up. And it's great that even where birth pains, they end with a, a delivery. And it's, here we see that there's birth pains that, that dominate the news that we watch, that dominates the conversations that are being had even this week. And ultimately, they're not the goal. They're not the end. But I believe they're pointing towards a, a delivery. And so he says these are but the beginnings of the birth pains. 